A problem with the control valve is one of the more common reasons for an irrigation zone to continue to run after the end of its cycle. This could be a defective solenoid, damaged diaphragm, or debris inside the valve that prevents the valve from closing completely. Signs that indicate that you may have this problem would include a continuously running zone or standing water from one or more weeping sprinkler heads. Luckily, as long as the body of the valve is intact, the fix is pretty simple. The most common valves used in residential applications are globe and anti-siphon valves. Globe valves are typically installed underground, while anti-siphon valves need to be installed at least six inches above the highest sprinkler head in the zone. After identifying the valve that operates the problem zone, shut off the water supply to the system. Most irrigation systems will have an isolation valve or a backflow device that you can close so you do not have to shut off the property's entire water supply at the meter. If your valve manifold is underground in a valve box, you'll want to clean out any soil that may have accumulated over time around the valve. It's important that dirt or other contaminants are not introduced into the system when you open up the valve for repair. Next, unscrew the solenoid from the bonnet and check to see if the plunger moves freely and is not rusted, jammed in place, or has a damaged seal. If the solenoid looks good, then remove the screws securing the bonnet to the valve. You may also have a jar top valve that unscrews just as the name implies. Be careful to remove the bonnet slowly. The diaphragm assembly will include a spring, so be careful not to let it get away from you. Now that you've exposed the diaphragm, Make a mental note or take a picture so you'll remember how the replacement should be installed. While similar in operation, valves have differing designs that require the internal components to be installed in a specific way. Now, remove the diaphragm and check it for damage. Tears, pinholes, or rough surfaces can all lead to a malfunctioning valve. If the diaphragm checks out, look inside the body for debris that may be causing the problem. Also check the bonnet for damage or for a clogged exhaust port where the solenoid sits. If your valve has a bleed screw or metering pin, also inspect these parts for damage. If the diaphragm was damaged, then it'll need to be replaced. Valves aren't that expensive, so you may want to just buy a new one of the same model and replace the entire top assembly, only reusing the existing body. As I mentioned, valve designs differ, so make sure that you install the diaphragm correctly. On some models, you may need to line up holes in the diaphragm with screw holes in the bonnet as well as the exhaust port. Once you have the diaphragm installed, replace the bonnet. Be sure that you do not over tighten and damage the bonnet or valve body. Also, to ensure a good seal, alternate from one side to the other when you tighten down the screws. Next, replace the solenoid, then turn the water supply back on and test the valve. If you're using a new solenoid, be sure to use new waterproof wire connectors to attach it to the common and zone wires. Either solenoid wire can be connected to the common or zone wire, just make sure that the wires are dry. You can manually test the valve by turning the solenoid a quarter turn counterclockwise or by opening the bleed screw if your valve has one. Alternatively, you can run the zone manually from the controller. Check your work for leaks and verify that the valve opens and closes completely. If you would like to learn more about irrigation troubleshooting and other landscape and irrigation topics, Ewing offers professional training seminars. You can check class schedules and enroll at ewingeducationservices.com. Valves and valve repair parts can be found at your local Ewing branch or online at ewingirrigation.com.